Hi there, I'm John Shields. Welcome, welcome to our very first episode of the Farm and Bay to Table series. Um, we've been thinking about this for a while and putting something together that celebrates everything Maryland. Uh, there's so much amazing produce and seafood and orchards and dairies around the bay that we were just thinking, we need to do something to celebrate it. And when we're gonna celebrate, we like to cook. Uh, that's the best thing that we could possibly do. So for today's episode, um, I'm gonna be joined by Mary Hassler, who is the uh, uh, President and CEO of Harford County Public Library. And we have a well-known Harford County ice cream maker, um, and she comes up with all kinds of amazing flavors. So that's Kate Dallum of Brooms Bloom Dairy. So I don't know if you've been outside recently, but it is hot. I mean, it is so hot. So in uh, summertime here in Maryland, it's time to get outdoors, cook, get the grill out, take things, go to the shore, whatever you want. So we're going to be assembling some uh, dishes with iconic Maryland hot weather ingredients, chicken, seafood, crab, tomatoes, corn, everything. Um, and last but not least, ice cream. So um, I don't know if any of you are up for lemon and peppermint sticks, but if you are, let's get cooking. So um, I would like, without any further ado, uh, to introduce our co-host today and my co-cook and my, my sous chef, um, Mary Hassler. She's right here live in our kitchen. Hi, John. Hey, honey, so how are you? It's good to see you. This Walmart girl is thrilled to be here. And I'm in John Shields' kitchen. Can you believe that? We're right here. Exactly. We're, right here. we're both Baltimore. That's so true. We actually grew up not too far we're, from each other, which is true. so ironic. I know. It's kind of crazy, yeah. isn't it? Yes. So but, this is exciting. But we do know the food. And we know that you know the food. And if you're new to the area, we're hoping that we can kind of give you a little bit of uh, hints, ideas, mm -hmm things that you can do with things that grow and swim and walk all around uh, Maryland and the Chesapeake Bay. So for most uh, barbecues, you know, when you're getting the grill fired up, yeah, we do steaks and we do this and the other thing. But in my house, they were always doing chicken. Um, I, a lot of my relatives lived up in Baltimore County and Harford County were all farmers. So we would always have fresh chicken and we'd have scrapple and we have oh, all kinds. scrapples of that. My husband's a fan of scrapple, yeah. loves it. Yeah. So we always <laughs> had things that were fresh and they came right from the farm. So chicken was always um, a big one. Um, so I was thinking, you know, for a barbecue or it could be even something like if we're out back. Um, so you don't have a grill. You don't necessarily have a grill. What could we do? So I was thinking like a barbecue chicken that will work well either on the barbecue or in the oven, and then you can just bring out platters of it. Does that sound? It sounds delightful. So anyway, we got some delicious chicken. Now, um, I usually use fryers for this, um, you know, because, because the, the roasting ones are a little bit big. So if you get a fryer, it's a little smaller, and I generally like to do about an eight cut. So that means that you're taking the breast and you're cutting it into two pieces, and then you have the drumsticks, and then you have the wings, and then you have breast there too. So I mean, you, you, you have quite a, quite a number of things there. So um, what I like to do with it first, because everybody, I think a lot of people think that you get a barbecue sauce, you get the chicken, you put it all over it, you put it on the grill, or you put it in the oven, and bam, I'm done. <laughs> That doesn't work so well because what happens is the barbecue sauce usually has some sort of sugar component in it and it burns. And it burns. So we don't want that. So I think what a good idea to do is just to marinate the chicken a little bit before I'm going to put it into the oven. So I'm going to get my handy dandy gloves on here. So when I'm uh, tossing the chicken, yep. we don't have such a mess. Yep. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of canola oil. Just pour that all over there. And also going to add a little bit of olive oil. Now, the olive oil, I'm using a lesser amount because it has a, a very low burn temperature. 
So if you want some stability, stay with a vegetable oil, a canola oil, and you want the flavor to come from the olive oil and not to be the, the entire thing. So I'm gonna take some of my Irish sea salt. I always get some of the Irish sea salt, bring it home with me. It's the best. It is good. And then I'm gonna take fresh some pepper. fresh pepper. Now, you would think we sit right on the, the ocean. We, we should be able to do some Chesapeake or Maryland sea salt, shouldn't we? I would think so. I think we got to get working on it. And then, <laughs> then obviously we have McCormick spices because we are. So I'm putting a little lemon pepper on this. I like the lemon pepper flavor um, on like on steaks, on chicken, sometimes on seafood. So you see, this is like really, really, really easy. Nice, nice. I would never think to use lemon pepper before the barbecue. That's yeah, that's intriguing. Yeah, it'll it'll give us a nice thing like that. We're gonna take a little bit here. Then I'm gonna take just a little lemon. I love lemon on chicken. It just really does something special to it. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And then the secret thing Ooh, secret. that my mother had in all of her chicken dishes, she'd always say, because she would often be out. With the girls having uh, cocktails or in something in the afternoon, I she think called. I would like your mom. She <laughs> called me up to have me put the food in, and so she said, "Johnny, when you put in the chicken, and make sure you put a lot of paprika on it." <laughs> so we're getting a little paprika on it. The Just, red sweet pepper, correct? It's a red sweet pepper, and it gives a lovely color to the chicken as well. My grandfather loved paprika; loved it. He used it on everything. Okay, so voila, we have that. I'm going to take this right over here, okay. right around the corner and throw this into the oven very quickly. This is really easy to do, John. I mean, so far it's been very simple. I, even I could do it. Absolutely. Well, I, I, you know, most people, you know, when I, I've, you know, written a number of books on the Chesapeake and so many people come and they say, you know, I love Chesapeake cooking because it's simple. Most people already have most of the ingredients on hand. It isn't like they have to go out and get all kinds of exotic, crazy things. You know, Captain John Smith said that when they, uh, they first sailed into the Chesapeake, the fish were so fresh and so plentiful, they attempted to catch them with frying pans. So I think that kind of set the tone of Chesapeake cooking. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Just let all the things come through. Let the food speak for itself. So, all right, we're going to make a little barbecue sauce here. Okay. Um, generally, a lot of barbecue sauces will have, especially up our neck of the woods, are going to have um, ketchup as one of the bases. Now, do you have a preferred brand of ketchup that you use? Well, in the old days, I used Del Monte, but Hunts or whatever mm -hmm. are all fine. Or if you actually have... Um, some of the books and you have recipes, you can make your own ketchup. Ooh. So that's, that's not a bad thing either. All right, now here we have a little apple cider vinegar. Nice. And then gonna take some brown sugar. Um, generally, most barbecue sauces, as we said before, have some sort of sweetening component in there. So well, brown sugar makes everything taste it's it amazing, it's, I it's, think. It's a good thing, isn't it? I'm going to put a little bit of water in here. It's about a quarter cup of water. Okay. Get rid of that there. All right. And then uh, some Worcestershire shire sauce. Oh, Worcestershire shire sauce. Now, you know, um, when I did some of my earlier cookbooks, I would be down uh, the Pratt Library mm -hmm. um, in the Maryland uh, room, mm -hmm. looking up old, old recipes. And you'd be surprised how far back Worcestershire sauce really? goes. It's an oh. English condiment. And so obviously, you know, they were the first settlers here in Maryland. And um, they brought that sauce with them or, or you know, variations sure. of that sauce. So I find that it's in almost every single recipe old-fashioned recipe yeah. that they use the Worcestershire sauce. Okay, and now we're going to put some more lemon. Because what do you have? What do we have going on right now? We have a sweet and sour. An acid, sweet yep. and sour. I love it. So that it always. So I'm going to put. Uh -huh. And John does use a recipe too. He follows it. I am. Like I do it. I am following the recipe of sorts. Of sorts. You know, I'm not always used to following recipes, <laughs> but. Because we're doing this, I thought we might as well try to do that. Yeah. 
Okay. So now I'm just, we're going to try to get this up to a bit of a boil here. Now, are you on low, medium, or high heat? I have this on high heat. High I have it heat. all okay. the way up for a number of reasons. Yeah. One, we don't want people to have to be here until, until 1130. Tonight. Well, they might want to be here, but I totally they, agree. They could be. <laughs> and uh, two, because you see that it, it's kind of thin with the water, with okay. the, that. The idea is we're going to bring this down and thicken the whole thing up. Okay. All right. So here we have some delicious couple tablespoons of grated onion. There we go. Now, do you use a fancy grater or do you like what I do? I get a bowl and I have a flat thing that yeah. is great. I, okay. usually, I usually just yes, use that. Yeah. And then you, you hurt your knuckles, right? You, you uh -huh. do. Yeah. You do. Okay. I mean, growing up, I mean, I didn't know anything but a box grater my whole life. Well, that's you know, true. that's all we had to grate. Mm -hmm. All right, now, how much of this garlic in there do they have? One teaspoon. So it's one teaspoon. So I always use the fresh garlic. Now, if you don't like chopping garlic all the time, and but you like to use it a lot, there's a couple of different things that you can do. Um, you can say one day is garlic day, and you take a whole bunch of garlic, and then you put it into some jars and put a little bit of olive oil in it. Oh, just yeah. a little bit, just to moisten it, not to or to swim in it, just to moisten it. And you can keep it in the Frigidaire. Oh. And anytime you need to use garlic, take a little teaspoon out and it's as good as new. So that's a, that's always a good way to do it. Now, is that a special knife you're using? Because I know people are always interested in the utensils you're using. Yeah, this is a um, Wusthof knife. Um, I've been, that just happens to be something that I use for years and years and years. And I really like them. It's um, very big. It looks really big. It is. It's a chef knife. Okay. And so you generally, most people that cook or, or cook professionally, we use this for, for most things. And you'll have some that are even larger wow. and one that might be, you know, uh, a, a smaller one. But this one I find, you know, works really well for most recipes. Another thing that you can do when you're, um, when you're doing your garlic, when you have the whole clove, I just take it and press down on it and smash it first. And then it makes it so much easier to chop. Oh, well, that's a good tip. Yeah. So we'll put that right in there. That's good. Okay. It's, it's really Ooh, it's good. <laughs> it's pungent, isn't it? <laughs> Whoop -a. And then we're going to put some dry mustard in there. Two teaspoons. Mm -hmm. Again, this is another ingredient that goes way back to, to like the English really? and a lot of things from the Caribbean too. Oh, Caribbean, yes, I would think that. So you get both of that in there. Okay, let's stir this. I love the dish you have that in. That's vintage, isn't it? What? The little glass dish. Oh have. yeah. That's vintage. I have one just like it at home. <laughs> so here we go. So it smells like a barbecue sauce. It smells delightful. We promise you every time that we are working on the technology for Odorama. That would be um, awesome. <laughs> and uh, that way, when we do the classes, you get to actually get the aroma as well. So that's that's pretty much it for it. I'm going to let it um, let me go for okay. a few minutes. And then once it comes down, we want to let it go. It'll start to get darker and it'll get thick. Mm. So you see, that's kind of where we're gonna kind of get with that. So I have this all ready to go, and then I can we can show how we do our little brushing with okay. the chicken, and then we did it. That was really easy. It is easy, it really is easy. And I think when we're thinking about picnics or anything like that, you want it to be simple because you, you have people, you're entertaining people, you don't want things to be too complicated. And you can do this way ahead. You can make this, put it in the refrigerator two, a day, two days ahead, do your chicken. And you could even make the chicken in the morning because if you're going to have it outside or a picnic, it doesn't have to be hot. Just so, yeah, can you use boneless chicken if you wish? You could. Okay. And, you know, I did an eight cut chicken, sure. right? Do anything that you okay. like. Wings or... The thighs, thighs are really yummy Love these thighs. days. Love thighs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can do absolutely anything with okay. that that you like. Okay, so I'm just gonna 
move this off of here, off okay. stage. All right. Then I'm going to go. It smells grab. delightful. It does Just smell, delightful. It does smell good. Let me get my official Maryland <laughs> things here and we'll grab the. Grab a little bit of chicken. Grab that, here. and oh my gosh, it's it's wafting through the kitchen, just the barbecue it's scents hot. and it's melting a, all together. So it's, it's a hot truly hot. amazing. Oh, here comes our chicken coming back. Here's a chicken right. back here. So now, normally, mm -hmm. we're doing this for our class and for the television kind sure. of thing. So I would generally let this go for about forty minutes before I actually put the sauce. sauce on. You want to put the sauce on for about the last 15 okay. minutes. And that keeps it from burning, correct? Yes. And sticking to the bottom of the pan, which and, is always a pain. Exactly. Too. That can be a <laughs> okay. real. So all you have to do at that point, you know, when you have about 15 mm -hmm. minutes left, okay. you just brush this all on like okay. so. Looks good. It looks really good. Now, is that a special brush you're using or just the it's normal? just it's just a pastry okay, brush. Pastry brush. Yeah, it's okay. fine. Put that all over the top of there. Looks like good. Can you cover everything? No, I'm not going to cover it. All I'm right. going to just put it right in just like this is and um, we'll let it cook for a little bit longer. And then I'll show you what happens. Okay. I'll show you what happens after that. Oh, the magic. I love the it magic. when the magic happens. It's the magic part. Everything melts together and becomes spectacular, which I think is happening right this moment. Right. Oh my yeah. gosh, look at it. Look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. Wow, look yeah. at that. Yeah. So anyway, uh -huh. that's kind of what happens. Do you see how the um, sauce got yes. dark and rich? Well, this is... This yes, is what it looks like. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. It's almost like a mahogany. It is, isn't it? it? Yeah, it yeah. is. It's like a mahogany feel to it. Yeah. Which it's... is awesome. All right. So yeah. we're going to put this over. I'll get okay. this into the other room here. All right. And we'll get those plated later. We can see how everything looks. Oh, my gosh. Plated. Okay. Plating so important. You know, presentation is so important. It's something I've never really learned well. Um, but my youngest daughter does it very well. So it's always <laughs> nice to see a, um, you know, a nice plate when you receive it. It so, is. It's helpful. Yeah, very helpful. All right. Now, this is this is where this is the part where we need the the uh, mood music, oh. um, you know, as we kind of switch sets here okay, we're and, you know, sets. try to do it nice and gracefully, gracefully. and it looks like everything is just, you know, I love totally. It. I like standing here feeling like I'm a real chef here, but exactly. And you are, but nobody's noticed. I haven't done anything, but it's awesome. Well, I think, I think you've, you've given me a lot of moral support, but I have a lot more for you to do in just a little bit. I'm good so. at cheerleading. Very good. At cheerleading. So, so stay tuned for that. All right. All right. Now I'm going to get a little mm -hmm. towel and put a cutting board down here that we don't catch on fire. Hopefully okay. it happens. Making sure we turned everything off. Yeah, we have everything off here. <laughs> we promise. Okay. Don't I'm gonna make sure that get that like that. Put this over here. All right. So that way we can put this here and then we'll be ready to do a little bit more cooking, right? Love it. Yes. So what is our next project we're working on? What's our next one? Mm. I bet you I have an idea okay. what it's going to be. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, let me let's talk first about the theme of this the theme of this um, um, show today. Um, we wanted to highlight farms and everything throughout Maryland, and uh, you and I. We're fortunate enough to be able to take a little field trip the other day um, up to Brooms Bloom Dairy. So um, um, I think we can actually take a, a look and see where we were. Oh, great memories. Yeah. Great memories. All right, let's do that. That's fabulous. Hi there, I'm John Shields. Maryland has been home to hundreds of small dairy farms in the past decades. And following in that tradition is Brooms Bloom Dairy in Harford County, which has operated as a farm since the 1700s. For the past nine generations, the Dallin family has worked this land and more recently transitioned it into a small dairy farm. We recently headed out to Brooms Bloom for a tour with Kate Dallin and her daughters and niece who run the dairy operation. After meeting the mother cows and the baby cows, we learned how the local milk is produced, separated into whole milk and cream, and then bottled. 
Rooms Bloom is an iconic summertime favorite destination for Bel Air and Harford County residents. That's because their herd of dairy cows provide the milk for some out of this world amazing ice cream. In this farm and bay to table class, we'll meet dairy farmer, ice cream artisan, and cheesemaker Kate Dallum as we explore the wonderful world of Maryland picnic foods. John, that was amazing. I, I, I had so much fun that day. And, you know, the cows growing up in the city, I, I didn't have cows in my neighborhood, but they're just wonderful. And learning about the different type of cows and just the whole process. I mean, I'm so glad we were able to show that tonight. I know. I know. That was so much fun. And uh, we got to finish it off very nicely. Yes, as well. we did. But <laughs> again, with no further ado, I really want to welcome, and we're so excited to be able to have Kate Dallum here today with us, the uh, the ice cream master and and the woman that makes it all happen up at Bloomsburg. Kate, thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. This is awesome. It this is, is awesome. Really, really awesome. Yes. I was so I was so excited. We've been talking about this for a long time that we'd all get together and we can talk about ice cream, we can talk about food, and we can talk about the summertime, and. Um, so when I'm thinking about the summertime, before we get into the, the thing that everybody's waiting for, um, I love tomatoes in the summer. I mean, I could eat them. It's like, I mean, it is actually a fruit, you know, as opposed to a vegetable. And you can understand why that is because you just keep wanting to eat them, eat them, eat them, eat them. So I got some tomatoes for us. These are beautiful. Look at these. Beautiful. These are, beautiful. These are Maryland Eastern Shore tomatoes, actually. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, uh, a beautiful thing uh, to, to behold. And I know Mary. <laughs> Mary loves tomatoes. She absolutely, <laughs> she absolutely loves tomatoes. And, and come on in here. Come on in, Kate. Okay. Oh, the tomatoes, the tomatoes, the tomatoes need to be. Uh, okay. We, director. we have a director. We have a director. And hopefully our cutting board won't catch on fire this time. Uh, so John asked me my favorite recipe for tomatoes. And my mom was an early organic gardener in Baltimore City. And she used to grow tomatoes. And we would go out, pick them, barely wash them off, slice them, a little salt and pepper, a little mayo if we had it in the house and just eat them. And that's the way we've always done it. That is my family recipe for tomatoes. So, and John just laughed. He was like expecting something, I think a little bit more sophisticated, <laughs> but you know, that's the way we ate them. And now I get a little fancy. Sometimes I'll drizzle a little olive oil and some Italian seasoning, but that's when I'm getting really fancy. Yeah. Not very often. <laughs> yeah. And you? Well, I, I had a grandmother who used to make tomato aspic, which was like Ooh. a jello salad i at the time i did not appreciate it but now I, <laughs> I i really wish she was around and she would make it for me again because now i think i would love it it mm. is very unusual but i think it actually is a maryland have you ever oh, heard it's, of it's, oh, oh absolutely it was a big uh dish at the maryland uh the women's industrial Exchange. Yes, yes yeah yes. that that was a staple right. people yes. absolutely loved, loved that. it yes yeah so i mean you can do so many things with tomatoes and you could make a tomato sandwich and there's nothing better right, give me, than that. Give me your recipe for a tomato sandwich. Well, you know, um, you need a really good red tomato. Uh -huh. And I mean, the best month to eat a tomato sandwich, I would say, would be August. Yep. Because you can't beat the tomatoes in August. Absolutely. You know? And then you need a center slice, maybe two slices. You need a, you need, mm -hmm. um, a little Let's bit see. of salt and um, real mayonnaise. I'm a big, I'm actually a big fan of that. That Duke's Dukes. I love Dukes. I love the Dukes. Too. I like that. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what we're using at the restaurant. Yes, right I am. I, I think that's a great And we are not sponsored oh, by Dukes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, mention, <laughs> just, men, just mentioning that. We just really like Dukes. I'm and, sorry. And um, a little salt and white bread. Just family. White bread. Uh -huh. Actually, cheap white bread. Yeah. Um, Cheap white bread. <laughs> Cheap white bread. You will not, you will not find that at, at uh, no, 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 no. Look, look at that. Yes. See, look at yes, look at that. That is a perfect. Is that a beautiful? Yeah, is, is that a beautiful, beautiful. center cut? It or is. What? It, and it's not even August, and that's a gorgeous. Day. I think it's pretty nice. Yeah, I think it's well, beautiful. We've had some pretty hot weather yes, issues yeah, so far, it, so I think it's really speeded things up a whole lot. Yeah. 
I agree. Yes. I'm pretty and you know, sure. the first tomato in your garden is it's such a treat, such a milestone. Mm -hmm. And uh, my my father, my grandfather, a lot of my relatives, that a constant conversation would be when your tomatoes yeah. are. Oh, oh yeah, in. yeah. And, that, and who had the first tomato? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, you know, people talk about it all the time, even even in cities, because people are yes, growing in backyards. So many, which is wonderful. And the, the, that's the conversation. So how are they doing? Uh -huh. Are you having problems with them? Right. When do they come and up? And da, 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 all da, da, this da, da, monitoring, yeah. which is wonderful, yeah. actually. It, I really love people that get passionate about their food. It, it, it's it's it. so great, isn't yeah, it? It, is. it really is. Yeah. So this is a good time to interject um, uh, something that is a great resource for all of you out there and tell your friends, tell your neighbors, um, is the Maryland's Best program. Um, Maryland's Best uh, highlights everything from around the state. Um, it gives you access to CSAs, local farms, um, dairies, ice cream. Uh, and it also has a, a really nifty thing. It shows you what is in season when. So when you're not quite sure uh, yeah. what's mm -hmm. what, you can go to it. So they have a fantastic website, and it's called marylandsbest.net. So great resource for all of us, really. Yes. You know, if if you want a source for local chicken or local cheese, they can find the farm closest to you, wherever you are in the state. Yeah, so I, I think that's pretty, yeah, it is. pretty awesome. And John, at the library, we are developing an agricultural focused by local page, and that will be one of the links too. So you can go to one oh, site and go find all about Kate's Bloomsburg yeah. or wherever you would like to wherever go. Else. Wherever yeah. else. No, exactly. It, you know, it, that's part of the mission here. And part of the reason that we're here with you is to be cheerleaders, to get people to meet the people who grow the food for you, to understand where it comes from, and to support that. How many times, I've heard a million times people saying, oh, I remember when I was young, there would be farms here and there. Oh, I remember when I was young, there would be this and that and the other thing. And then they say, well, that's not anymore. I said, what is it? <laughs> and it's happening everywhere. And the only way it's going to continue and grow is you get your pocketbook out or your wallet exactly. and spend the money. Especially on the East Coast. In this yeah. part, part of the country where the farms are getting smaller, yeah. The, the key to it is direct is connecting with the public. Yep. Yeah. For it's the good. farmers and the public. The farmers need to get out there and connect with the public as much as the public needs to connect with the public. It's true. It's true. And I know like from, from my own chefs, um, we try to take them to different farm visits and they get to know the people. We have a little garden in the back that they, you know, that we grow things. It gives you a whole different appreciation for oh, that really food. Does. When when you've either grown it or you know the people that grow it, it's it's it the connection is amazing. It, it is really amazing. is. Yes. And the best part is using local products when they're in when the tomatoes come in in August and the various ways you can prepare them. Yeah. Um, you can make tomato sauce. You can do all sorts of things with them, even the sandwiches. And it, that's what I discovered over the past year and a half is when I would get a box of produce and then figure out how am I going to use it that week and learning different things and trust me my husband and my sister all and my mom all benefited from that and it was just learning something different and using what you have yes yes you know, using what you using have what you and have. that's a whole new concept for, yeah for some people it really yes, is it's so important mm -hmm. so, yeah yeah it is in your cupboard and say what can I do with all yep. of this and, and that's what our grandparents did I exactly mean, that was, mm -hmm. yeah and the other thing that you have to remember mm -hmm. We were waiting for July oh, and nice. August for the tomatoes. We we're waiting for then for the basil. In the spring, we were waiting for the asparagus and the strawberries. And it only has a small window and it's a delayed gratification. Exactly. And to not have something all the time, to get it when it's at the peak of its season locally, gives you a greater appreciation for food. It, it really, really does. It certainly does. It all right, so while I'm talking, and we're just waxing about all things local. Now, is that basil you put around? Yeah, there's okay. some beautiful, fresh basil. It smells beautiful. Here you can put some behind your ear. I know it, I it goes like that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, and Kate um, is also a cheese maker, in case you don't know that, and you go up to Broom's Bloom. And uh, you're making fresh mozzarella yeah, now, yeah, are you I not? Am. Yeah. I am. I've made it about six times. There's yeah. a lot of Yes, we're getting very good at it. So it looks I think there's not anything better really than, you know, some 
beautiful fresh mozzarella and some fresh tomatoes, you know, like local Maryland tomatoes. We put that together. I'm going to talk about making a little sandwich. And mozzarella is a very easy cheese to make. Um, although I have to say I have I have not made it uh, successfully every time. But the, it's one of those cheeses you can make at home. Yeah. And it gives you a great feeling of, of success once you've done it. But it's yeah. one of those basic cheeses you can make at home. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of like a ricotta is, like, is yes. always pretty easy to yes. so you can do it with grocery store milk or broom spoon milk, yep. wherever you get your milk. Well, there we go. Mm -hmm. We have some gorgeous yes, tomatoes and the mozzarella and the whole thing here wow. and the base. So we're going to pass this off. And now we're going to start talking about salads and we're going to talk about another iconic Chesapeake, Maryland. Dish, right? It swims. People are scared of it. Some people say it looks like a spider. People who aren't from here think, why do you eat those things? <laughs> but we know because we grew up with the uh, beautiful blue crab. Oh, and so I think we're going to get, a, I need a pound of blue crab over here, please. And uh, thank you. I like the magic people over here. Uh, we, we need magic people. We need magic in our lives. So right here, I have one pound of Maryland crab meat from J.M. Clayton's in Cambridge, oh, Maryland. Cambridge. Oh, right. Absolutely. Are they like the capital of crabs? They in are Maryland? indeed. Let me grab. Uh, talk about right like here. So historic can, Maryland yeah. industry. It is. It's the oldest. Um, seafood processing and packing house That's in, the, in, in, in the Maryland top. and on the Chesapeake Bay. Wow, okay. Yeah. So look at this. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Is, isn't that gorgeous? Yes. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. And it's all hand picked, correct? Yep. It's yep. hand picked. Uh, this is some of the best crab meat in the world. Yeah. And in my mind, it is the best crab meat in the world. But I do have to say, in all honesty, that this year, Crab is very scarce. Pickers are very scarce. And so this is some of the highest prices of crab meat in history. I mean, we're at the top of it right now. So it's a good idea when you're using crab meat like this, obviously to use it carefully, but I encourage people to use it in dishes that you can stretch it. Um, so where before, you know, I could make crab cakes out of this and maybe I can feed three or four people. But if we put it in a big salad or a big casserole, we can feed eight, 10, 12 people. So you're gonna stretch the dollars and stretch, stretch the precious protein. All right, let's grab some bowls here. I have some bowls for you. So we're gonna start off with making a, um, a little bit of vinaigrette here. Let me put those right over there. Okay, here comes all the goodness that we need. I have to laugh. My grace is not my middle name, and I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. All right, we're getting all the stuff together here for this. This is actually, not only is it tasty, it's a beautiful, it's a really, really pretty dish. Ooh, nice whisk. I love anything with sweet corn in it. I am like a corn-fed girl. I, I know. Imagine. All right, great. We'll take these here, 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 here. Okay. Now, let me grab my recipe here, because as I said, I do try to follow the recipes these days, as opposed to how I don't. All right, so I'm going to um, start off here with a few tablespoons of olive oil. About one, two, <laughs> three. And it like warms my heart that you measure that, right? That's yeah. the way I do. That's and, the way I measure and, and, and actually, this is one from the farmer's market. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Those are wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're yeah. in Bel Air. They're in Bel Air. Yeah. This is Dimitri olive oil. Oh, yeah. So it's wonderful. the closest thing you could possibly get to local olive oil yeah. because Dimitri's from Baltimore, mm -hmm. but he's from a Greek family right. and they have a farm yeah. in uh, Sparta. And uh, they are there tending the olives and they process them there and bring them back here. And I honestly, I think it's that the best it, it olive is the, oil. Look in at the it. Universe. Look at it. It's it, just, it's, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut a lime here. So, this will give a really nice flavor to this salad. Get a bunch of lime juice in there. 
Hey, you could use, you know, I mean, you can sometimes get bottled lime juice. I wouldn't use like the real lime that comes in that the comes squeezy in the thing. thing. Out, that's <laughs> that's not my, my favorite. <laughs> yeah. But um, in a pinch, it could do. But also in some stores, you can actually find little bottles of freshly squeezed lime juice. So um, that that is optimal if you can do it. Put that there, like that. So while I'm doing this, mm -hmm. what would you if, like you, us to do? if you like, I can give you something to do. All right. Okay. Now the thing we're making today is a, a, a corn, crab, and red pepper salad, right? Yep. Operative word besides the crab is the corn. corn. <laughs> so I think I got this from Barton. Oh, Barton. Now, yeah. now do you know wow. the name of the variety? I don't know the name of this variety. Maybe you'll know when you when well, you when you know, cuss, well, cuss yeah. that. Can you tell? Well, I know. It's nice. <laughs> now, now, when I was a child, the best corn was always Silver Queen. Yeah. You, know, oh, you yeah. had it everywhere. But they don't it make was, it anymore. Well, no. you know, they, they like everything else, Super they it, it wouldn't be as sweet today if we had it. Although there are people that, that still grow it, and it has a very, I would call it a vintage taste. Mm -hmm. um, but with the development of all of these other really sure. sweet. Now, I have to say, I think Maryland corn has always been one of the king or queen of yeah. corn on the East Coast, in my humble opinion. Well, you know, New Jersey and New York all claim the same, but I know, I know. All thinks it's Baltimore and Maryland. Well, I mean, we are we are a little bit biased, but but I think we're right. <laughs> right. I, I think agree. we're right. Now, so. now did, is, did uh -huh. Silver Queen originate in, in, in Maryland? Is that a Maryland? I'm, I That's what I had read. Is that it originated there, and then over over time they they found that some of the the, the hybrids are, were actually sweeter than and the then, silver yeah, queen exactly. corn. Exactly, and that's really what's kind of and, happened. To yeah, them. and and they were more consistently sweet. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what they did. But, uh, so right now I just made. Yes. There's a lot going on. We have people husking <laughs> corn. I'm cutting things, but basically to make this salad, what you want to do is do use a very good olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, uh, lime juice, and that basically gives you your vinaigrette. A nice uh, red bell pepper, sweet bell. You know, a lot of people say, I don't want to bet red bell pepper is going to be hot. It's not hot yes. at all. They're sweet. That's why they call them sweet bell peppers. And um, they're delicious. They're delicious. I do, they are. I do like it. Was, growing peppers this summer. Are you? I have found two of the sweet banana peppers. Uh -huh. Four, excuse me. I've found four that have just have taken now, off. Now I have a question about yes. bell peppers. When I was a child in my grandfather's garden, there were green peppers that always turned to red peppers. Yes. And, and it is but, the same one. It is the same one. Yeah. So is that exactly what's happening That's today? Exactly. They have not developed cultivars of just red peppers. Exactly. Okay. Yes. yes. And people don't realize that, but it's true. It's well, true. And they get true. sweeter as the, the, yes. the older they get. Yes. 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 So I'm, I'm not. I'm not a vegetable expert. I know a lot about. Yeah, definitely not. I like, actually knew that. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm gonna, well, I'm I don't know why <laughs> they've changed everything. Yeah. The corn and corn. <laughs> Now, canning houses were so popular, you know, that was a major agricultural industry in Maryland in the early um, 1900s. It was, it, was, it was massive. Yes, canning, oh. is, and it was because we were so close to the railroad system yeah. and yeah. so easily and to the bay, bay and the bay. Yeah, you know. I mean, Canton, Fells Point, all, yes. all up and down all the Patapsico, yeah. they were all canneries. Canneries. And barges would come from the eastern right. shore. And from truck farms right, all around here. Right. And it's and because we had such a great transportation system. And then I think when the South started growing vegetables year round, mm -hmm. and you know, there was some and California. Like California and refrigeration and came. Refrigeration, that, that, that kind of the world. And system. then the interstate highway system. Yes. Right. That changed everything. Yeah, everything. It changed right. absolutely right. everything. It was no longer railroad all right. right. So who who wants to get some corn cup? Kernels off here for me. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. I'm pretty good at right. this. You don't want me to hold one of those knives. Yeah, I, I, I actually do this a lot. I grew up doing this. Wow. I do it when it's cooked. Yes, I, I actually do do too. That's when I do it. Now, my grandmother and I used to pan corn, um, and she would like parboil it. Yeah. And then put it in baggies. 
And you could do the yeah, same so thing excellent. with this. Okay. You could drop it into some boiling water and count to 10. Yes. Okay. And then put it in ice water. That's exactly just to, what you Just did. to shock it. But technically, summer corn at the height of the season and you take it off air, you don't need to do anything else. You can eat it. It can you go can right in that. It can yeah. go right in yeah. that salad. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I have heard that yeah. many times. Yeah. So, so that's exactly how well, this salad now, uh, yeah, I have a lot of silk in this because I'm not a professional. Now, I am a big fan of this milky part. Oh, it's great, isn't that it? Is, like, so what do you do with it? Tell us. Well, it, I'm just a fan of what it tastes like. I think it's like some of the best taste in the corn comes from this. From mm -hmm. this. So my grandmother always had me scrape it like this. And oh. if you didn't scrape it, she would make you go back. Well, and and then the milk, it. the milk goes into, into the it. corn yes. and oh. gives it a great flavor. Yes. And you can also use the corn cobs and you know put it all together and uh, make a nice little stock. All right, here we go. Put the rest of you, these you in here. You cook with the corn cob? Yeah, you put yes, them into it, a pot, a great make a little seasoning. stock. Well, I'm and learning also. If you ever do a chicken corn chowder. Oh, there. yes. Oh, there, yeah. yeah it's so okay, a wow. little bit of red onion. Red onion is awesome. And here are the more of the bell peppers. We have some red mm -hmm. and, and green, green in there. Break that off. I'm going to take a little bit of garlics. Because we like garlic and everything. <laughs> do we not? We just oh, we love, love that. Garlic. We love that quite a bit. I'm going to take just a oh. little bit of hot sauce here, real quick, like. Now, what, what Tabasco? Do you do you have a, a preferred brand? Well, I mean, I just use Tabasco most of the time, but there's so many local hot sauces now yes, that yeah. are awesome. They are. So right. it's definitely. So then we're just going to take this and put it all good. over there. And then I'm going to take and shake a little bit of Old Bay. We all know the Old Bay. Put a little bit of Old Bay here, like so. And I have some cilantro, oh, oh. some beautiful cilantro, mm -hmm. like so. And then we're going to take the very precious crab meat. So depending on what you're going to do with it, generally for this, in the recipe, it says it can be anywhere from a half a pound to a pound. So depending on how much you want to, you know, stretch this thing, you sure. could do that. Now, would I, you call this back fin? This is lump. Lump. Okay. This is lump. And what I also would suggest, um, you know, if you, let's say you want to go for the gusto and you want to feed a whole lot of people, uh -huh. you could also take like some elbow macaroni and oh. cook it off. Oh, yeah. Put that in there as well. Then you could you have a great big bowl, use the one pound of crab and feed a whole a crowd of people. So anyway, here we go. Okay. So this is our sweet corn crab oh my God, that's salad. Beautiful. It is beautiful, John. Beautiful. All right. All right. Yeah. Tell me the difference between like a back bend and a lump and the taste differences. That's a good. That's a very good question. Um, it it kind of sounds like what it is. You know, with, when we take a crab, uh, you have the back fin. That's the, by the swimming legs. And when you break into that, you're going to find some really, really, really big lumps. That is jumbo lump. Then you're going to find additional lumps. That's lump. Then you go into the rest of the crab and whatever is left in the back fin. And that used to be called regular or special. Um, and that's that. Basically, the taste, except for the uh, claw, because the claw is really sweet. The mm -hmm. claw is actually my I, I love I, I do I love that um you know otherwise the taste isn't so different it's the mouthfeel okay it's getting that great that big bigger yeah okay all right now it's time to we're gonna get to, we're gonna switch this set around but you know when you're having that when we're having that um time of the the picnic yes what happens at that time of the picnic well, it's kind of like <laughs> I scream, you, you scream, scream, and we, we all scream, scream for ice cream. cream.
All Me right, I it. think it's ice cream time. My favorite. My favorite. Yeah, 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 yeah. As you can tell from the video, it's my favorite. Uh -huh. <laughs> never get tired of we did, we did love that, didn't we? Yes, we did. So, Kate, maybe you can tell us and everyone out there, how did you get into the ice cream business? How did that happen? Well, I've always loved ice cream, but um, we kind of stumbled upon it. We, we wanted to open a little store on our farm, and we were looking at a, a product that we thought people would remember and they would um, come back repeatedly for and where at the time we sold cheese and eggs and, and uh, pork sausage. We didn't think that would quite make people remember where we were. So we discovered ice cream and we were like, man, this is the ticket. If we can make a really good ice cream, people would definitely remember. Yeah. So people always remember ice, ice cream. They do. And and ice cream is one of those things that trigger childhood memories. And you um people know oftentimes have a favorite ice cream store from their uh, youth. They also have a favorite ice cream. They do. Everybody do has a favorite. favorite yes. All right, what's your favorite ice cream? Well. I love the lemon. I also wow. make an ice cream out of local sweet corn, which is why I could cut that so well. Um, it, you know, it all depends on the season. I really am into the seasonal flavors at Christmas time. I love the peppermint. We do a great ginger snap. I don't know. It's, I have a lot. A fig, isn't it fig ice cream that you were talking about I, earlier? I do a Fig Newton that yeah. has fig jam in it. Mm. Yes. That's very good. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Yeah, huh? I'm, good. I'm always thinking of ice cream and ice cream flavors and what I can do and combinations of things. Yeah. It's that's one reason I like it so much. It's very creative. It is fun, isn't it? It's very fun. Because you can do a little right. of this, a little of that, make it, and then it's your signature dish. Exactly, really, isn't it? Yes. Which and it, it's hard to make a bad ice cream, honestly. Yeah. Not to say <laughs> I haven't done it, but it is it's difficult. Any combination of anything mixed with ice cream. Right. Usually works. It usually works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I go to the market most every Saturday, and you know, Kate has big sign with all kinds of ice creams every every week and often when we're going to do anything and talk about it um you know i i, I generally say well what should i get I, <laughs> what's the best what's the best thing for us to get and you always have you know kind of steer me in the right direction well i i i normally always have a specialty one that i worked on that week and i'm i'm anxious to have you try it john so, so now when you're making an ice cream you tell me what the basic ingredients are for your ice cream. Well, we, we make our own ice cream mix, as you saw in the, yeah. in the video. Yeah. And um, so milk, cream, stabilizer, sugar. And then uh, a lot of them have vanilla added, but right. not all. It, yeah. You know, it all, all depends. It's very diverse. You can make, you know, sweet, savory ice creams. You can make, we do a, ha we used to do a habanero pineapple ice cream we need to actually bring that one back which yeah. is like a hot sweet thing yeah yeah so yeah we it's you can basically make ice cream with anything now one of my favorite summer ice creams and we don't we start making it uh around june 21st it's one of those things people have to wait for is uh -huh. lemon and it's and that actually is one of my favorites it's like a lemon chiffon it is it's a great texture now <laughs> when kate had me at the farmer's market and the first time she told me she goes oh i have a lemon ice cream i thought i have never had lemon ice cream i've had lemon sorbet mm -hmm. um you know i've had all kinds of things you know lemon flavor but never a lemon ice cream so i got it and i got some for myself and i got some for the restaurant it is unbelievable absolutely unbelievable it has a very very strong uh tart lemon taste which took me a little while yes. to to create um I had to really think about what I was going to add to it to give it that that um, very sharp taste. And I, I came up with dehydrated lemon that we have somewhere here. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah, we exactly. we use this true lemon um, brand, but I, I do know there's others. That's really one of the keys to it. It but if you really want like a little special little um, zest, you need to crush up some lemon heads. Lemon. Oh lemon my head. god. Lemon oh head. my god. Oh, we, we got like some crazy fireball. stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, we don't have we don't have all the equipment that Kate has. She has like some really swanky equipment. 
but you don't really always have to have that to make an, a nice ice cream. Yeah. So you could make an ice cream with kind of making like a creme anglaise. Uh -huh. You could do it with just whole milk and with yeah. eggs. You can do all kinds of things. But I've used this recipe. It was actually a recipe for cinnamon ice cream. And I've used it for years. And so when you were talking about this, I thought, wonder if we could do a lemon uh, with the same thing. With the yeah. same kind of thing. So it basically, ladies and gentlemen, uses sweetened condensed milk. And, mm. and this is, you know, like a 14 ounce kind of can. Can't go of, wrong with sweetened oh, condensed yeah. milk, and, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so that seemed pretty easy too, right? Oh, look, you have that. I'm ready. You're, you're I'm ready that. for those little, those little, yeah. little things. All right. <laughs> So we, Kate, I just for the no, for the <laughs> actually has a dairy, and so <laughs> so she brought brought us um, some some of the milk, milk, and I had some half and half there. Yeah, I, so we're gonna put and your milk is wonderful. Thank you. I mean, it's nice, and you can tell we're big fans. <laughs> okay, so all together between whole milk and some a little bit of half and half, it's four cups. That's pretty, pretty easy, right? Yeah. So far, I think we're doing pretty well. All right. So all we have to do is Stir this, the, the, the um, sweet and condensed milk is very syrupy. And, <laughs> That's why we like it. Yeah. but it's, it stabilizes, <laughs> it, it stabilizes, it stabilizes like the base. The stabilizers that we add. Yeah. And, and it adds your sugar, your, it yeah. adds your sweetness. Yeah. If you notice, we didn't put any sugar right. in here at right. all. It was just the sweet and condensed milk. So basically, we stir that around like so, right? So, Kate, where's your, uh, where's our um, All right. real lemon? Oh, right true lemon. here, yes. True yep. lemon. We have some true lemon. So now when, you can get little packets of this, and this is actually easier to find than these big packets. And I think John measured it out that you would need six little packets. Yeah, or I, one this size. Yeah, I actually I think I used three or four little oh little, little packs. Pack. Okay. Yes. Here we actually have some of the original so little yep. pack one there. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So that's what you could get in the store. And that's about a teaspoon yes. in yes. there. So, so I, I just I you just, don't have to go go crazy with it, or you'll really be covering. Yeah, up. what do you normally do? Here, I'm gonna let somewhere. you do it. Okay. What do you I'll stir, you, you do it, and then we'll okay. see where we'll see where we are with that. Okay. So we're gonna do so you did about four of these. Uh, yeah, three or four. So let's four, try three. Mine are probably. Three. You can always add more, but yes, you can not, never take it out. Remember I've learned, that. Remember I've that. that many times. Okay, so we're going to stir that around like a so. And then we have the really nifty, nifty things of the lemon head candies. Yes. Wow. If you're searching for the lemon heads in the general Hartford County area, I have all of them. <laughs> and then I have, and then I have the rest. And then, uh, yes, you do. I have the rest right here. So one of the things that we can do, and this is kind of therapeutic. Um, it is. It is. I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> I don't want to break your camera. <laughs> okay. okay. Are you sure? Okay. Here we're gonna. We're we're do this, this. So it's, 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 I wish sure we, it's not mine. I can't see what. See if we were my in my kitchen, there'd be all kinds of surfaces. It would be appropriate. Yeah, mine too. You could do it. Own, own, but I don't care. care. So anyway, <laughs> what I'm doing is just oh, yeah. smacking yes. the lemon head, and then we're going to crush it up. Now, the real way to do it, the best way to do this, this is kind of the faux way, yes. is I crush it first like this, and then get the Cuisinart out. Yes. And yes. then run it through the Cuisinart just to get it a little bit That's what fine. We, we have this giant, this industrial thing that kind of makes a ton of noise. It's like a bunch of BBs. Exactly. And so we didn't want to do that to you today because uh, with all the microphones yeah. around here, if we had to turn that on, it really would have been an unpleasant experience right. for you. And, but if you leave these a little bigger, they'll be like little crystallized, yeah. like little, you know, Special treats in your ice cream. Right? Oh, yeah. It's just amazing. <laughs> I love this. Now, and if you want to do a, a, a Baltimore version of this, yeah. uh, you can add peppermint, peppermint oh. um, stick, or, and even a little peppermint oil. Speaking Look at that. Peppermint? Right? Yes. We actually have peppermint <laughs> sticks, so you could. That'd be a great addition. Just grind this up as well. Yes. Put yep. some of those mm -hmm. in there. And a oh, doesn't that of, smell good? A little bit of oil. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> I know so, I get tired of lemon so since 
Kate makes this in big batches. When we talked it through, we weren't quite sure what was going to happen. Right. So I played around with it and I came up with that for a regular batch of this, it's about eight of these lemon heads and about three, three packages of the, um, the, the real lemon. And, uh, and, and that is, you know, that's really very affordable. This whole recipe is very affordable. Oh my God. It, yeah. It's, it's um, the condensed milk. You go to your ball candy place and get, you know, a handful of lemon heads. Look at that. You can grab those little lemon packets. All right. Let's see. We'll see what we did. Let me get you. I'm, I'm gonna get you both spoons. I'm gonna have to tell me. You can drink it. This yeah, actually, you can drink it. <laughs> at this point. There we go. What do you think? Should we put a little bit more of the? I like it. I probably add a little more of that. Of this. I mean, I have been, that's that's I've what been I'm thinking I've been known too. to be a woman of excess, but I. I would, no, because the, yeah. the, the one. Right, you don't yeah. want it not to be. Correct. You, know? you don't right. want them correct. to wonder what it is you, you, you're trying to make. Look at that. I mean, that it's already. Beautiful. Oops, there it goes. It's even a beautiful color. It's kind of creamy. Look yeah. at it. It looks yummy. Mm. Now, how long will it take in here? I've never actually used oh. one of these. All right, I'm gonna, well, I'm, gonna I'm, gonna gra I'm gonna grab the bowl That's for it here. Yes. You all plug it in for me. Thank you. Mm, it good. Oh. All right, this, I mean, this does look yummy. Uh, <laughs> I could just you drink, drink it. it. Really, I could just drink it. It's awesome. Be a topic so for I, some other. I've time. never used one. This, I haven't. It's going to be interesting. I okay. had it. I had an old-fashioned one mm -hmm. where you put it out of the way. Yeah, I hadn't done this either until cool. yesterday. So <laughs> this is a, a Cuisinart sure. um, ice cream maker. It's a. It's a little one. It. It makes. Um. I think like one and a half quarts. Okay. Now, do you have to put it in your freezer yeah. too, John? So, so this is like your frozen. Oh, you've taken this out of your freezer. Yeah. So I had that in oh. there. You want it in for about sixteen to 24 okay, hours okay and then you just take it and you sit it in the base and this kind of right is is, is your dasher right. your dasher, dasher. Yeah. yeah and so you put that with the round side yeah uh, it doesn't come over <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway we'll oh, describe that we're, we're going to describe this to you <laughs> okay. um i'll just pour that in and yeah in make sure you don't get it on the outside yeah why know there's enough wow just pour it, John. Just like so. Uh -huh. Voila. Uh -huh. And then you put this handy dandy cover on it. Like that. Like that. Sounds good. And there it goes. That's now, it. how long does it take? Less than 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. Less than 20 minutes. That's, That's amazing. Quiet. I think it, it took like about 15 minutes last night. So let's see what we have. Let's see what we have here. <laughs> Oh, and that's last night's ice this cream. This is last night's ice cream. All I have to do is get it off. Want me to tell you? Nope, you got it. Oh, oh. Oh. Look at this. Ba-bam. Ba-bam. Good job. So we're going to let that sit out there for a second. And then let me grab another funny board here. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mary Houston. She has been so excited about this from the time <laughs> we started planning this whole thing. What did you tell me? What it was the summertime favorite? Oh my gosh, lemon and a peppermint stick is amazing. It's a real tradition in Baltimore. It's actually in the book of Little Women too, by Louise May Alcott. Is so, it? Oh yeah, it's featured there for little Amy Guns, little Mr. Lemons. But hey, it's a part of the story. Um, All right, I'm gonna awesome. let you, I'm gonna let you at it. I ran around last night Getting looking lemon, for yeah. peppermint sticks. <laughs> now, where did you end up buying? Eddie's. Eddie's. Yeah. And Ooh, I, this, is, this is actually a local kind of oh, candy good. producer. And they make these lovely, beautiful peppermint sticks. Did you know you can mm -hmm. cut really well when you have a good knife? Just a little chip. It does help, doesn't <laughs> it? Really does. Now, do you put a little sugar on top of yours or not? What are you doing? Do I'm, do? I'm going oh, with you. Yeah. Well, that that's what I had thought, but you know, I make okay. ice cream, so I add sugar to everything. I and there's too. the sugar. And so I'm from, I, I love <laughs> sugar on everything too, honey. All right, the stick. I got yeah. one stick out that's there. A little sugar. 
This is a big Fourth of July thing at, in my it house. Is. I have is it? I have a cousin that makes them every mm -hmm. year. We always look forward to it. It's the only time of the year I get them. I know yeah. it's the fourth when she yeah. shows up with her lemon stick. Can I get your lemon stick in. So one of the things that you can do, if I find a little knife here, I'll show you. Make a little invention in. Here. Oh, that would oh, be that better. Would be that would be fancy. Just, 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 wow. just you just kind of make a little yes. X there on there. Yes. Like the things that you get at IKEA, you have right. to put together. Yeah. <laughs> and then okay. you can put it in the exact and, and, middle. And, and there, theoretically, it should, yes. you want to try one? Sure. All right, here we go. So I know there's going to be all over Maryland, there's going to be a run on lemon sticks, lemon sticks. coming up. Extra. And also right. on uh, lemon ice cream. And lemon heads. And lemon, lemon heads. I hope the lemon head people I are ready. One, honey. Oh, thank you. Yeah. This is my first summertime one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is a tradition. And I wonder how many folks at home remember doing this too uh, many times. So. Oh my God, it looks so good. It looks good, it does. All right, now we have some, you brought some cheeses and things here. Okay. Want to bring those up? Absolutely. All right. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. So not only does Kate make amazing ice cream, she is a talented cheese maker. Well, my family is. I have oh, um, honey two daughters and a niece and a wonderful cousin that all make cheese with me. And, and? we just have, she's making some yes. beautiful things. Yes. This is a Cresswell cheddar. So these are fresh cheese curds. Now, if we were in the Midwest, uh, everyone would know what these were. In yeah. fact, they'd be buying them at the gas station. They're very, very popular. In Wisconsin, in you Wisconsin. can get them absolutely and everywhere. That's where I, I learned about them. Um, and so these were actually made on Wednesday. They were made today. They were made yesterday. My, uh, we made these cheese curds yesterday. So they should still squeak if we open them up. Which they is be all squeaky. squeaky. Yes. Squeaky. They so all, and then this squeak? is a mozzarella. Tell me about well, the, they squeak when they're at, at the freshest. It, okay. ha, it has to do with like a moisture sauce okay. ratio. Yep. And then we do aged cheddars. I just started doing a mozzarella. Cheese making has been a lot of fun. It's very precise. It's completely different than ice cream making, where it's hard to go wrong making ice cream. Man, you can go wrong making cheese. But, <laughs> but I'm learning a great deal. You light up when you talk about making the cheese. Yes. I mean, you can tell you right. really like well, it. Well, it's, it's, it, it, yes, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's kind of, I've made, been making ice cream now for 17 years. So I was ready to add something. And, the, you know, the cheese has been a new, exciting thing to learn. Yeah. And that's challenged me in a lot of ways. And I actually, I think I needed to be challenged. In sure. And it's been wonderful for our farm. It's amazing to be able to produce the milk right on the farm and make products for our community. It's just an amazing feeling. And the community know? and beyond, because I know you're down here at the Waverly yes. Market. Yep, we, I know John Everywhere we use it at the yes. restaurant. And yeah. that's the best part about right. this is Maryland, we're really fortunate to have folks like you everywhere. We really are. We, know, we have a great yeah. agricultural preservation yeah. program in Parker County and, uh, and in the state of Maryland. And to keep those those farmers productive as well as that farm preserved we've really got to work on we've got to get we people do. buying local Absolutely. and focusing on their the local communities and get to know your i know john said i, I know what, i know right? what you i know <laughs> i know what you're up to 10 minutes so uh -huh. one of my favorites which i discovered this year was your chocolate milk now i i, I drink chocolate milk but not all the time <laughs> and uh this I tried this, and I, I swear, if I could bury my face in it, oh my I God. would. It, it is, is so good. Well, my, I chocolate will... milk in the universe. I mean, truly, it is a dessert. So, if you want to have something slightly different in the evening, <laughs> rather than having ice cream, you could put a little of this in your shot glass. You could add something if you would like. It's it truly is amazing, and I've that never raved about milk before. That, well, life. I'm thrilled, and, and my husband is thrilled because this is what he creates. Really? The chocolate milk. He worked a long time on his chocolate uh, milk. Tell so. him it is a gold medal winner in his eyes. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's just amazing. And I bet you can make ice cream out of it. You could, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. We could actually use the same recipe. Wow. So in, instead of using the other regular milk in it, just put that chocolate, chocolate milk in. And you could add some peanut butter with it. Or oh, you could peanut butter. Yeah. Yeah, you, you could do salty caramel with your oh, chocolate salty milk. caramel. Coconut. Yeah. Coconut. Okay, that's too much coconut. <laughs> salty caramel. Salty that caramel. That might, that might mint, mint chocolate. Ooh, All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh my gosh, thank you. 
And here you go. Okay, this is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> All right, now we're now we get to have actually have a little bit of ice cream oh here gosh. live on our show. And we're really eating it. This isn't fake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow, this is a really good recipe. Oh my God, this is really good. It's good, isn't it? It's it good. turned out really, it really, really did. well. It turned out great. So we want to thank you so much for being with us for our first uh, farm and bay to table class. And thank you so much for coming well, and being with us. I'm thrilled to be here. I feel like I, you two are just amazing. And I'm so happy you're here, Kate. Yeah. You well, know, we're just happy. We're happy to be here. We're happy to be supporting our ag friends, our seafood friends, the state of Maryland, Harbor County and beyond, and everybody who's out there and, um, and to be able to start doing this. Yes, so, yes, it's so important. And I, I, and folks, I wanted to feature Kate first because she gives so much back to the community. Oh, and nice. Other than the ice cream and the chocolate milk and cheeses. <laughs> and calories. <laughs> and our, um, but yeah, it's, it's been a great time. Okay. And, well, thank you. And I want to remind everybody, our next show is July 22nd. July 22nd. Oh my and God. It's, it's a beachy life. It's a beachy life. Yeah, you're going to love that. <laughs> so we're not leaving. Uh, we have things all over the place here. And we figure you probably have some questions because yep. we've been doing a lot of things in this last hour. So send us your questions, your comments, what you'd like to see or what you need to hear. We're ready to go, right? I agree, John. I know everybody always wants to know what kind of pots and pans you use. Yeah. Uh, after your last show for us, I went and got the uh, silicone. Oh, did pans. you? Did you talk about them? Some oh, they're yes. so good, aren't they? They're so good. Yes, I, I bought them. And of course, I'm always fascinated by them. <laughs> no, I was a little scared by them, too. <laughs> uh, but this is really, I mean, this would be a fabulous party, simple, if you want to do for your family and friends, I mean, from start to finish, it's just amazing. Yeah. It, I mean, just amazing. And the ice cream alone is just amazing. But anyway. So do we have any questions? Anybody? We do. We uh, do. All right. All right. So Randy had a question about substituting grapeseed oil in both the barbecue and the dressing. Absolutely. That's what I thought. Grapeseed oil is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It really, really is. It has a wonderful flavor. It's nice, clean. Um, good cooking temperatures. Yeah, I, I definitely would recommend that. Okay. And then Cynthia had a question about a set, what would you recommend she substitute for the Irish salt? If someone's watching their sodium intake. Oh, other. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I just use Irish salt because I use Irish salt. Um, you could use, um, what is it, Mrs. Dash? Yes. Um, yeah. If you, if you were trying to, yes. to, yes. to watch yeah. your sodium. That adds a ton of flavor. It does. Yeah. It gives a whole lot of flavor. Or, the, you know, the other thing that you can use, you can just use some regular uh, either table salt or kosher salt, but just a pinch, you know, use just a, just a pinch. And, and many of us need, you know, we do need to watch our sodium. Yes, we do. Yeah. Good question. That's what I said. Good question. Uh, and Megan said, where can I buy tomatoes like that? She <laughs> lives in the city. And I answered. The Waverly I Farmer's the Market. That's what the I way The 32nd yeah. Street Farmer's Market. market. Yep. Is Every Saturday. Yep. Look yep. it up online. Phenomenal tomatoes. It is. And, and I believe there's a market under. Uh, the, the bridge on Sunday. Under the bridge on Sunday yep, on the Falls Way. Yep. And there's all kind of local um, in Towson. There's in Timonium, Haynesville. Uh, again, go back oh, to Maryland'sBest.net. Yes. You can find out where all the yep. where all the um, best markets are, yep. what's in season, what you get each week. Right. You can find it but all the there. But the best tomatoes are always timing. You just you just can't rush it. You can't rush a tomato. No, that's true. Um, and then Rosalind has a question that will make us giggle because we were actually talking about this before the show. Um, what's your opinion of the new air fryers? Can the barbecue chicken <laughs> recipe work in an air fryer? Mayor? I think, you, yes, you could do that. I, I We discovered our air fryer during COVID and have been using it at home. And you can cook just about anything in the air fryer. There are tips and tricks to doing that. And we are all thinking of doing a show on air frying. The, the, <laughs> there is an air fryer sitting right off set here that I have not yet used. I have not a clue, but Mary has graciously <laughs> offered, we're going to do a show all on the air fryer. And yes, you could do a barbecue could, chicken in could. the air fryer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Ruth wanted to know if you can suggest some alternatives to crab meat since it's so expensive right now and hard to get. 
Well, there's a number of different ideas. Um, you can mix things uh, with crab meat to kind of extend it. Uh, we do a, a, a crab cake at the restaurant that we call, I can't believe it's not crab. crab and cake. Is, is and it, actually, we have that, that tonight. And, yeah, and it, th zucchini. this one is zucchini. And we just grate the zucchini on the coarse part of the grater. We salt it a little bit, let the um, water drain, and then we squeeze it out. And then you make a crab cake batter. Yeah, you do need a little bit more binding, a little bit more breadcrumbs than you would with the crab cake but that's absolutely delicious. Um, you can use some, some of the Chesapeake Bay um, blue catfish. Oh, oh, so yeah. what you could do is poach the catfish a little bit, bake it with a little bit of wine, salt, pepper, cool it, and then have a, a half a pound of that and a half a pound of crab meat. Mix them together. You're gonna get a, a cake, a fish cake or a crab oh. cake like you can't believe. So there's all kinds of ways you can kind of mix that up and stretch it, but still get some of that crab flavor. That zucchini crab cake is it's really good. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Yeah, that, it was was good. that was yeah. fantastic. From the dark here, it was phenomenal. <laughs> and, and zucchini comes in in August, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Love it and, with zucchini. And you're looking for ways wow. to get rid of it. You don't know what to do with it. Oh, I might actually take some of exactly. this. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Any more True. questions? True. Um, um, everyone, we, you have so many great comments. Thank you for supporting local, for supporting Maryland. Um, and so I just wanted to share those with you. Um, oh, and great. everyone wants the lemon ice cream recipe, mm -hmm. which I said we'll have tomorrow at some point. We will. And we send it out to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So everyone loves the show and, and thank you. Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right, great. Make sure you sign up and come back and join us again for um, farm and bay to table. And we're going to have a peachy life. So sign up for July 22nd. July 22nd. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. Mm -hmm.